Oh, oh. oh, well, I've come to speak with Henry. Oh, he's left. He's uh, gone down the woods with his flute and his notebook. And who is this? Uh, Rachel Stewart. Miss Rachel Stewart from Mr. Thorough's shop. Do I dare ask if you are a friend of Henry's? Not yet. <laughs> we just met this morning, and then he left. You speak as though this disturbs you. I came all the way into these woods to assist, and the man barely greeted me. Oh, he was just being normal. He was just being Henry. Are you not under Mr. Thorough's employ? Well, then you have no valid complaint. A coin for your mood. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I do not sell my offense so easily. Oh, my goodness! Such spirit! <laughs> she has a high-priced mood, obviously. Tell me, what was Henry's reaction to the young woman? Oh, he left. Splendid! He likes her. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. Miss Rachel's the first breeding thing he's liked in years. <laughs> Perhaps so. Yes. I must speak with Henry. Which direction did he go? Oh, oh, down to the pond. Uh, follow the sound of the flute and the non-banging drum. <laughs> Do not think that you have companions. Know instead that you are alone in the world. Poor Mr. Henry. <laughs> hey, I thought you'd left the town. I have a job to do. So, I'll do exactly as instructed by my employer. I certainly don't need any man's coin to fulfill my obligation. He didn't mean anything by it, really. Why do men assume their thoughts transcend other people's feelings? Men work differently. A man executes his thoughts unencumbered by emotion. And a woman will express her feelings freely. Often without thinking. <laughs> so, I'm wrong for being angry? No, you're not being wrong because it was an honest reaction. You're only wrong for thinking you had reason to. I completely disagree. What do you honestly find that disagreement with? And why must you put me to the test? You cannot convince me the spread of cities does not matter. Why object to progress as though it's a bad thing? Progress without balance is a bad thing. Progress by its very nature causes imbalance. To deny imbalance denies progress. Only man struggles with this imbalance. It is against nature. When a beaver builds a dam, it does not harm the stream. When a bird builds a nest, it causes no injury to the forest. Beavers and birds exist within the boundaries created for them. They do not cause progress. Only man has the intellect by nature to cause progress. How can you possibly deny man's destructive role in nature? His lack of love for this earth. To leave it unchecked will eventually lead to the destruction of man. And how can you deny that destruction is an essential part of creation? Oh, nonsense! Is this emotion or expressive male thought? <laughs> Look at your own life, Henry. Me? I destroy nothing. And do not even begin to imply the natural gleaning of the earth as destruction. Did you or did you not come to these woods and this pond to study the value of nature and your place in it. I did. And did you not destroy a small plot of these very woods to build this cabin so you would have a place to stay while in nature? It is not the same. It's exactly the same. My cabin is not comparable to the spread of a city. It's merely the first building. There's no difference. Read my work. I document the difference clearly. Your father cuts down trees to make pencils that you use to write how much you love the trees. Again, my redundant friend, it's part of the natural gleaning of the earth. That is called progress. A few short years ago, we wrote with charcoal and quill pens. Not a single oak would fall. Now we cut down trees to make pencils and employ your family. Progress. So I shall use the tools of progress to expose the sin of progress. Then you, sir, are a hypocrite. I beg your pardon. She speaks from emotion, Mr. Henry. There was no thought involved. <laughs> it sounded very thoughtful to me. Explain yourself. You, sir, are a blind hypocrite. <laughs> what a delightful woman. 
You write so eloquently about the emotion of your place in nature, but you refuse to express the emotions you need to understand what nature is for. You write of the value of nature, when all the while you disobey your natural needs, rendering your place on earth as no value at all. It is as though you were never here. What? Mr. Thurl, let me introduce you to a living, breathing woman with a point of view. <laughs> Don't be frightened, Mr. Henry. <laughs> you read my essay on civil disobedience. I did, at your father's pencil shop. And you've read through my notebooks. I have. Good God, a customer. And yet you conclude he is a hypocrite. Well, when skating over thin ice, my dear, your safety is in your speed. I should quickly clarify myself. You are a hypocrite, but not a fool. Not a fool? I'm suddenly to feel complimented? I didn't find your hypocrisy without wisdom. Although you're blind to your role in destruction, you are not wrong about a man's imbalance. Well, there you have it. My life's work validated by my father's cleaning woman. This idea of balance may be not altogether inappropriate. Perhaps the idea of balance can bring perspective to this argument. In what way? It means perhaps that a man destroys a little by his nature. He should just not destroy too much. Exactly. Well said. And the cities, therefore, are the too much that causes this imbalance. Cities are part of the natural progress of man like an ocean wave. The wave moves onward, but the water of which it is composed does not. Again, natural. The greater the destruction, the greater the progress. There is nothing natural about it. Why do you equate destruction with progress? Here, you garden these? Yes. And you harvest them? Yes. And you destroy them by pulling them. You destroy them by cooking them. Is not a farm nothing more than a small city? A farm in itself does not decimate the land. No more so than a city. Factories. Plows. Smokestacks. Fireplaces and chimneys. Garbage. Manure and leftovers. Noise. Children. Confusion. Marriage. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh dear, I sense imbalance. Now that was not that meant was to... That was meant exactly as spoken. All this talk of imbalance as though it was balanced men speaking. Now we are not balanced. Love for the earth without loving the life this earth provides is unbalanced and it renders you irrelevant. Not bad for a cleaning lady. <laughs> my employee does not alter my thoughts, sir. And your thoughts do not alter my experience. Your experience has been to isolate yourself in a cabin so far from real life that you can only write the reflection of what true life has to offer. True life is no more reflected by society than your image in the waters of Walden Pond. Are not the stars reflecting on the pond at night actually the stars? You are so lost in the image of the stars, you do not see society creeping up to take the pond away. Where are your stars then? Where is your reflection of real life once the pond is gone? Your life is no more real than a dying fish left behind on a dry waterbed. At least the fish didn't die alone in a cabin talking to its vegetables. <laughs> Many people go fishing all their lives without knowing it's not fish thereafter. What exactly irritates you so about me, madam? Because... I cannot, for the life of me, understand why you bother to come to a cabin and write about a life you're not living. To the contrary, I have found the essence of life in its simplicity. You confuse isolation with simplicity. And you, my dear woman, confuse isolation with simply not wanting to be with you. I feel the temperature's dropped in this cabin. <laughs> I think I'll light the candle. <laughs>